Hi, I'm John Mahar. Uh, I'm with Reset, and uh, Reset is a nonprofit organization that puts volunteers, scientists, technologists, engineers, and mathematicians in elementary schools to work with the kids on hands on science activities and math activities. Our goal is to get the children excited about STEM learning and hopefully to consider careers in related fields when they get older. Today's experiment is a floating and sinking experiment. Um, the materials I have here are a hanger, piece of aluminum foil, six inches by nine inches about, a golf ball, a baseball, a pair of socks, and a bin of water here. So um, what I first want to do is to uh, have the children form a hypothesis about what makes things float and what makes things sink. And often the children will say that heavy things sink and uh, lighter things float. So I have them take a golf ball and a baseball. And uh, what I uh, want to do is to do the, the relative weights of these two. You can use a, a kitchen scale to do this and you'll find out that the golf ball weighs about one-third of the baseball. Um, but I, I like to do this in the classroom to show children how a, a balance scales work. So have it put in the socks, put the socks um, in this hanger, which conveniently has a hook, so I hope it will hold it. And then I have the children balance this hanger on their finger and see which side goes down. And obviously uh, the force of gravity pulling on this baseball is higher than that on the golf ball. So the baseball weighs more than the golf ball. Then um, I have the children put the baseball and the golf ball in the tub of water and observe which one floats and which one sinks. So, baseball is floating, if you can see that. The golf ball, which is one third of the weight, sinks to the bottom. So uh, it's obvious that something's going on in addition to just the relative weights of these two objects. And it has to do with the shape. Uh, depending on the <coughs> age level of students, you can talk about density. Um, but uh, it's, it's basically the force of the buoyancy pushing up on the baseball is stronger than the force of gravity pulling down and the opposite for the golf ball. I then have the children make a canoe out of aluminum foil by first folding it over lengthwise and then at each end make very short fold and a second very short fold. Try to make it watertight. Because as we all know, if your boat has a leak, it's gonna, not going to float. So then I um, have them put this in the tub and put the golf ball in it. And observe that it now floats, um, whereas before the golf ball sank. So um, what's going on here is the shape of the canoe is such that the buoyant force pushing up on it is higher than the force of gravity pulling down on the golf ball and the uh, aluminum foil weight, which is very inconsequential. Um, and then I explained to students that in the design of boats you can, in ships, you can make them such that they can carry very heavy objects. And I use the example of ships that bring, say, automobiles over from Japan or China. And obviously automobiles are very heavy objects. The ships themselves are very heavy objects, uh, often made of steel, and therefore the design has to be such that there's enough um, 
air in the boat along with the uh, objects it's carrying and that there's a, a big enough surface for the buoyancy force to push up to make that float. And um, that's the experiment for this week. I'm going to quickly just zoom in on some some tadpoles I have in, from a small pond I have in the backyard. Not sure how well this is going to work, but uh, looking at them now, it shows that um, they kind of look like um, fish that are small fish that are um, fat at the front and very thin at the rear.